On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we have one of the coolest cars in the world and one that you guys have requested many times on the channel and I could not be more excited to share it with you. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go, and today I am here with the Local Motors Rally Fighter. Now Local Motors is a really important company to me and we'll talk about their history a little bit here in a second. But first, the Rally Fighter, a pre-runner, a luxury pre-runner that you had to build yourself at Local Motors and they were incredible. It's definitely one of the rarest cars in the world. It's unbelievably good looking. It's built with a bunch of off the shelf parts here in America. It's probably a rocket ship. I haven't driven one yet, but today we're going to, and I'm gonna show you all around this amazing vehicle. So, Local Motors, let's talk about that first. They started in 2007, and they started producing this, their first big product in 2009. And I think technically the first ones actually got their assigned VINs in 2010, so they consider 2010 to 2016. So they consider 2010 to 2016 to be the production run for these things. And over those six years, just guess how many vehicles they made. That's right, 81. Now there might be a hundred of these things out there, but from what I know, only 81 of them have VINs. And this one is number 78. So it's almost the last one they made and I've never seen one this nice in my life. And I've looked at a lot of them over the years. After the Rally Fighter, they changed directions completely from being a boutique custom, you know, kit car builder. And they moved on to 3D printing cars with actual giant 3D printers like the Stratty. And I loved that thing. And then after that, you know, they, they pioneered 3D printing cars from scratch and they moved on to autonomous driving buses and they built ollie another super cool little bus that would drive around like factory campuses and stuff like that if you needed to go from one building to the other you could buy an ollie and it could just make the trips back and forth all day long and uh, you would just like hail it walk up to the bus get in and it would take you over to the next building on a campus another very cool thing and in the middle of that they of course built my drift trike the verado and i think that's probably the most important drift trike in the world because it was made in america off the shelf parts just like they're that's always what they built a bunch of off the shelf parts to build something really really good and that drift trike rocks and there's not a lot of those either so i saw one in craig jackson's garage the other day when hoovy was walking around there taking the tour hiding behind a shelby and i was like oh yeah it is that cool that craig jackson owns one very few people have the local motors drift trike and it's hard to express how cool that is too so everything they made i loved and then they went out of business January 4th, 2020. That was the end of Local Motors. And I don't know how. I don't know if they ran out of VC money. I, I don't know if they just didn't have a solid plan to move forward, but look how they innovated so many cool things. A insane pre-runner you could build yourself. A 3D printed car that was at everything. You saw it at CES. They literally always did groundbreaking things and changed the world and then they were gone. And unfortunately, I forgot about the auction. It happened earlier this year where they sold everything out. I wanted to buy some cars. They had some Stratties in there. They had some Ollies in there. I don't think there could have been anything cooler, but I missed out on all that good stuff. Uh, there were no Rally Fighters in that auction though. And we're here to talk about the Rally Fighter, so let's go. So this is Rally Fighter number 78. It is a 2015, one of the later models. And of course, like I said, you would have to go to the factory and build at least part of it, a little bit of this car. You had to do something yourself so that it could be a kit car. Now, this one has an assigned VIN, just like my Ariel Adam did. Uh, lots of cars are like this to become street legal. And rally fighters are actually legal in all 50 states, even California, if that blows your mind. So you can see it's got its assigned VIN, it's a uh, chassis number right there in the door. And all of them are also wrapped before we jump into this. There were no factory colors. The factory color is no color. It is black exposed fiberglass. You can see it right there in the door sill. So if you wanted a color or a design, the car got wrapped. Local Motors claimed they wanted to be environmentally friendly and paint is not environmentally friendly because of the chemicals. So they just delivered it all as raw fiberglass. That keeps the weight down, obviously. Wraps do weigh a little bit, but it's still honestly probably keeping the weight down. Paint is kind of heavy in reality. So 
they all got wrapped. And this one's wrapped in a Gulf livery and it looks really, really good. So we'll walk around the outside of this thing first and you guys might notice the originals all had the little Miata, the NA Miata door handles and those were really cool. So you could only get one finger in the Miata ones. This is a later one and apparently somewhere along the production run they switched to Honda Civic door handles. Also really cool. So uh, around here in the front we can see these AE alloy wheels uh, wrapped in some Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax, which is a, a pretty solid AT, I would say. And they're uh, 17 inch wheels with a beadlock. Up underneath, you can start seeing all the magic. They just bolted this car together and it's incredible. Look up under here where you can see just <laughs> beautiful billet everything. Local motors, uh, CNC'd into the sway bar uh, arms there. You can even disconnect the sway bar if you're doing a ton of off-roading. It is not electronic or anything fancy like that. I assume you just pop the bar off of the end of the sway bar here. It's splined, so you could just pull that clip, unbolt that uh, pinch bolt right there, and you'd be good to go. Steering, it is hydraulic. It has uh, power steering. You can see the little power steering box right there just after the yoke comes out of the cabin and you can see that it's also mid-engine. There's the balancer on the LS3, which makes me very happy, and it's basically all the way behind the tire. I mean, we're at the, the tread of the tire is where the balancer starts on that engine. So you are sitting right beside that amazing engine. When a company in America is building a boutique super off-road vehicle, what powertrain do they choose? Well, the best powertrain in the world, obviously. The LS3 drop-in from GM. Everyone loves the LS3. It's probably the best of the drop-ins because it's cheap enough and it delivers a ton of power, 420 horsepower, and torque is somewhere right in line with that number as well. So you get plenty of power. You get easily tunable engine management. You could throw anything else you want on it and it's all plug and play. You could go to a Holly, you could go to a Motec, you could do whatever you wanted, but you got an LS3. It does have air conditioning. You can see the compressor hanging out on the other side and it's backed by a 4L85. Of course, the 4L80 is when the 4Ls got bulletproof, so you know it's a monster. What could ever go wrong? Every part on this you can pick up at O'Reilly's. It's so cool. A quick trip down the street and all the parts are there. That's what happens when you run a standard drivetrain and one that's just untouchable. This thing will never break. I, I can't imagine a better drivetrain. Now most of the rally fighters have Fox suspension. This one is even more expensive. It is spec to the moon with Kings. It should have uh, about 18 inches of travel in the front and 20 inches in the rear. So you really have a ton of suspension travel. It is remote reservoir. If you uh, do a lot of off-roading, you know that the oil will get hot in your shock absorbers. And the more oil you can run in the system and uh, the faster you can get it in and out of the shock, the better it is. So remote reservoirs let you do that. These Kings look incredible up underneath there. You can see local motors stamped on tons of the parts, beautiful all aluminum shrouding for the front end, LED headlights hiding in there, all the wiring is top notch. I can't say enough good things about how this thing is built. Everywhere this 1.75 inch DOM tubing comes out, look at that. They weren't gonna let the sheet metal just rub on it, so they went ahead and covered it up with a little bit of uh, rubber trim just to make sure you don't end up tearing anything up. Monster control arms under there. You can replace the entire end if the ball joint needs replaced, it all unbolts. Everything is designed to be serviced. This huge, beautiful skid plate underneath. Make sure you don't tear up any of the artwork. We've got the LED headlights here. Uh, turn signals hiding out a little bit lower in it. Fog lights and a giant LED light bar hiding out in that front grill. And we'll just run around here, give you guys a quick look at all of the artwork. Look at the cable clamps for the brake lines there. Billet, of course. It's all laid out super well, and it has everything in here. They gave you all of the creature comforts in a rugged off-road package that was built to last. Bare brakes, six pistons, they're monsters. I think these are 13-inch brakes, 13.75s. <laughs> they completely fill these 17-inch wheels. Man, it is crammed in there. Amazing suspension in the rear again. Uh, another remote reservoir setup with massive King shocks again. And this also has the King bump stops, which is crazy. And what do you do when you have the best powertrain in the world? Well, you put a Ford behind it, of course. They all have Ford nine inches in the rear. With disc brakes, of course, 
And there you can see the parking brake, the monster brakes in the rear, and just everything is laid out perfectly. Look at the brake lines and hydraulic lines running to the back. The routing is amazing. All right, so we've covered basically everything outside. It looks like uh, we got a couple cameras here so you can see for the uh, backup camera on the head unit and also it has a digital mirror so you can see out of the back. Obviously the back is incredibly high. These are Civic SI taillights <laughs> that are wrapped black. So a whole lot of cool off the shelf parts make the rally fighter happen. Let's look under the hood real quick. We gotta get that open. There's some releases that are hiding deep inside the wheel wells and uh, we'll get the clamshell open. You do need to get the door sh shut and we can see the LS. Wow, this hood weighs a lot. I gotta say, at least they've got these monster gas struts that kind of hold it up there. Oh, it's got a lock over there. Nice, nice. All right, you can see all of the suspension here. This is so easy to work on. I'm so excited, I kind of forgot where I was going. This thing was built to race and score, which is who puts on the Baja 500, Baja 1000, of course. Most of the off-road races that are incredible, this thing was built to meet the score specs, and that's why you see pictures of them flying through the air off of dunes, jumping over everything, tearing it up. It was basically a purpose-built pre-runner for Baja teams and stuff like that to go out there and have air conditioning and pre-run the trails, map everything out, get their routes figured out before they ram Baja. So an incredible vehicle that is just built out of the gate to go do that. All right, so we have a Ford uh, vacuum booster here for the brakes. I assume it's probably all off of a Ford. You can reach most of the engine right here, which is incredible. A big local motors cut out of some sheet metal right there to make that look pretty as well. Oh, I bet the uh, I bet we've got a pre-filter and a filter in the air box there, all sheet metal. Really cool looking. There's the math. Look at the work. The work is incredible on this car. Nothing crazy. Out of the box coils, out of the box uh, drive-by wire throttle body. Everything is as GM delivered it. And they even set up a nice way to get the transmission fluid checked there. I bet that's one very long tube to get back to that transmission. All right, well, we looked under the hood, we've seen the LS. Nice jump points there. The battery's buried down there under the passenger tire. So they've got a really cool jump point set up so you can uh, charge this thing up if it's dead. Let's get out on the road. Yeah, I have to mention those monster spall fans on the radiator. Those are like 13s or 14s, huge E fans. And all, look at that. Beautiful radiator setup. The reservoirs on the Kings, really well laid out. You can get your nitrogen charge right there easily and you can set everything right there. The adjusters are all easily positioned. It's just thought out well, designed well. And I have to mention, they designed this car. It went from zero to 100 in 18 months. <laughs> Faster than basically anyone else ever builds a car. And look at this, look what came out of that 18 months. That's what happens when you, they crowdsource the whole design and built a monster. The best of the best. All right, it's time for a cold start here. I'm sure it'll start. Like I said, my favorite drivetrain in the world. <laughs> I know it looks like I've gone full dug with this two hoodies thing, but it is 20 and snowing currently here in Kansas and I can't feel my hands. So I'm sorry, I had to do it. And unfortunately, Doug did beat me to this by like three days. We had already planned on this and I just hadn't had time to come up to Kansas City to drive this amazing car. So Daddy Doug definitely beat me to the punch on this one, but I'm still super excited to share it with you guys and uh, my personal connection to it that Local Motors is incredibly inspiring to me. It's too bad they're out of business and I love that I own a little bit of their stuff. I'm almost tempted to trade the McLaren for this. <laughs> We are inside the Rally Fighter, waiting on it to warm up a little bit. Uh, we gotta let this thing come up to temp, which it's incredibly good at keeping the temps down. So it might take a little bit for it to warm up here. So we've got plenty of time to talk about it. First of all, these seats are incredibly comfortable. You can see it's got a local motors harness bar in it. It does have back seats, which seem like that would be incredibly fun to get into. And I would not recommend off-roading with people in the back. <laughs> Their heads might find that back glass and they might find it pretty hard. Uh, that said, it, it's got back seats and you can use them as storage and they look comfy, whatever you want. Really cool looking seats. They've got 23 and Rally Fighter embroidered in them. Simpson four point harnesses. Over here on the door panel, you can see, uh, 
I've replaced that door handle before in some other cars. It's probably a Civic. I'm just not sure what it was. Uh, nice door cards, fiberglass, nice door pulls, uh, billet on the back with a, apparently fiberglass and some rubber on the front. Rockford Fosgate six and a half inch coaxial speakers down in the bottom of the door panels. So well appointed top to bottom. You've got sun visors, you've got interior lighting, red interior lighting so you don't lose your vision out in the desert while you're reading your maps and white interior lighting, of course. The instruments are custom made. You can see the tax speedometer. This does actually have 6,900 miles on it. It's basically brand new. Oh, it sounds so good. Trans temp down here, uh, auto meter gauge and uh, oil pressure over here, another auto meter. And this one has a really cool thing. It has paddle shifters. Now, of course, all of the electronic GM transmissions, you can add this kit for about $1,200 and the owner of this one spec'd it with paddle shifters. If you know how a GM 4L shifts, and you likely do if you've driven anything they've ever made, any of the trucks, Camaros, uh, I mean, it went in everything. They're usually not good at shifting when you tell them to. If you move the gear selector and say, you know, give me third gear, eventually it gives you third gear. And I have a feeling these paddle shifters are the same, but this is a dream setup with a gear indicator. I always wanted to put this on my uh, fourth gen Camaro because it was a $1,200 drop-in kit. It just plugs right into the transmission controller and paddle shifters. Now, I think that might be cool off-road when you wanna lock it down into a gear. I don't think it's incredible for trying to go fast or, I mean, if you're racing, like what's the point? Let that transmission shift itself because it's already slow. If you know what the rest of this column is, let me know, I have no idea. Uh, we've got the wiper controls, high beam controls, stuff, oh, look at that, everything works. The high beams, it all works, signals, that is so cool. Uh, but I don't know where this column plastic came from. It looks like a Ford. I'm just not 100% sure. Cruise control right there. All the comforts, like I said, power windows, 12 volt outlets. Here's the climate control. Lock, unlock, some accessory power. I don't know what it goes to. Defrost, auxiliary fans, front fog lights, rear fog lights, and uh, the roof. Uh, I don't think it actually has anything hooked up to that one, but it does exist. And here we have a really nice Pioneer head unit, AVIC 7100 NEX. If you know anything about the NEX, it's like their cream of the crop series. So super nice. A billet shifter down here in the console that says Rally Fighter on it and a gigantic billet e-brake handle as well. Cup holders, 3D printed, also very cool. And uh, here's your USB from the Pioneer head unit. And it seems like that's about everything. You can see there's some pile marine speakers mounted on the back and the pods there so that they'll mount on the roll cage. I'm guessing those were added later because you don't combine Rockford Fosgate and pile. That's, that's a sin. This Rally Fighter does have front and rear cameras so you can see everywhere you're going. Pulling up to parking spaces, whatever you need to do. Hey, there we go, it just needed turned on. It's a dash cam too. We're strapped in. Let's take the Rally Fighter out for a ride. Drive, that sounds fine. Now the owner told me, be ready. It's basically just like your Can-Am. It squeaks and makes all kinds of fun noises while you're going over terrain. All the suspension is heim joints, just like the Can-Am is. So you have to kind of be ready for brake noises and rod in noises and all that fun stuff. So far, I haven't heard any though. It seems really composed. The gear indicator is so cool. I heard the build sheet on this Rally Fighter came out to around $139,000. And if you're into Rally Fighters like me, you of course remember they were only like $75,000. Now, the price tag made sense to me because it has King suspension and King any day of the week, just double whatever Fox was and the stock ones had Fox. I just found out this thing has a 6L80 in it. We are cruising along in sixth gear, and of course the 6L shifts a million times faster than any four-speed GM transmission. <laughs> and somehow it has pop pops. I don't understand how. It's just straight piped in an LS, but when you come off throttle, <laughs> this is incredible. I was not expecting a six speed. Apparently, if you have a later model of Rally Fighter like this, they are incredible. I 
am just mind blown by how good this thing is. I haven't floored it yet. It's been running for 20 minutes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right, that was insane. I was expecting it to just hook and go, but instead it just spun. It's cold outside, it's 20. Wow though. It lifts up the front end and it just is a blast. It's, it's a blast. Apparently we need to do a roll because we have no traction at zero miles an hour. So real quick, here's a little 40 roll, 45-ish roll. All right, you guys can see what's going on. Sitting on those massive, heavy Goodyear off-road tires, it chirped third gear at 40 mile an hour. What a drivetrain! This thing is truly what dreams are made of. I was not expecting it to be this good. Hey, I'm out here committing the cardinal sin, mall crawling. I had to go to Best Buy because the GoPro batteries were dead. Anyway, this thing has excellent street manners. It cruises around at 10 mile an hour like it's no problem and then you get on it and you're like, ho, oh, oh, oh. ho, ah, ho. This is, this is a car. Now parking it is a totally different ball game. It is incredibly hard to park. You have no idea where the front end is at. Um, it's nice that it has the cameras, but they don't tell the whole story. So I uh, three point turned it into the parking spot just to make sure I didn't hit anything because the front end overhangs are big. But now we're out of the parking lot and we're back to having fun. It's not fast until it's wide open because it doesn't like aggressively change gears. But when it is wide open, you're like, you're, you're laughing all the way to the bank. And when it's not, it's doing exactly what you wanted it to do. So you can't complain. It takes a minute to get used to driving the Rally Fighter. The steering's heavy, as it should be. It's got a real heavy front end. Uh, I mean, this thing does weigh 4,000 pounds and it has quite a bit of weight up front since it is mid front engine. Um, it's fine though. It's exactly what you would expect out of the steering. Uh, it does kind of roll side to side before it starts to steer. So you kind of have to factor that in. But after you drive it for what, I've, I've probably driven it for 20 minutes and it, you get used to it. You kind of forget what you're in other than the fact that it's gonna rock forward and back on acceleration and when you turn, but it's great. Great street manners, like I said, and I'm sure this thing's a monster off-road. I don't plan on taking it off-road or anything like that because it is for sale and detailing something like this would be wild. So we're just street driving it. It's freezing cold, so we can't really hammer it. That said though, I love this thing. What a wild vehicle. And if you're looking for something that's gonna be dead reliable and is, it turns every head on the road, made in America, so this is probably the one, I gotta say. And the burbles, and I'm only doing, what, 1500 RPM and I can let off the gas and have burbles. Nothing like a uh, turbo pops and bangs, you know? It's just a nice sound out of a nice American V8. Mmm, what a package. But you do have to deal with the roof squeaking on the roll cage and uh, noisy suspension, but it's so worth it. So worth it. A guy followed me all the way to the park where I took the pictures of this just so he could take more pictures of this. And it's one of those cars. Nice. One thing that's very cool about this is the steering, the front end lock to lock is straight ahead right now. You can see it's got the stripe up. That's lock one way, lock the other. I'm parking this thing right now and I realized when I was backing out of that parking spot earlier, it was incredible that I barely had to turn the wheel to have it a full lock to get out of a parking space. So that is really cool. It's very easy to back up. The camera is incredible. Obviously the camera is kind of aftermarket, kind of came with it. So it's just so well done. Like I said, if you forget that you're driving something special, the car is really, really good. It has street manners and I appreciate street manners. This rally fighter is currently for sale at D2 Motorsports in Kansas City. And I have to give a huge thank you to them. I'll throw a link in the description below for letting me drive this thing and experience a car that I've always wanted to drive. I don't know if I'll ever own one personally, but just having driven one is amazing. So thank you, D2 Motorsports. What an absolutely amazing car. Did I forget to mention it has power seats, power slide, lift, tilt, everything is there. It's a little bit tricky to get out of, but it is a very cool and good car. 
one that you could really you could probably daily this thing and be just fine anyway again huge thank you to d2 motorsports for letting me drive this thing link in the description below you can buy it if you want it that is it for today guys thank you so much for watching and allowing me to make dreams like this come true being able to drive something crazy like this Merry Christmas. I know I'll have a bunch more videos before Christmas, obviously, but we're almost there. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchchairgo.com for cool shirts. Not like this, where you can buy some Christmas presents, though. And please, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do, and I will talk to you next time. They also have a bunch of other cars. If you're looking for something cool for yourself for Christmas, Porsches, Rally Fighters, uh, Yukons, just all the normal stuff. Did I mention this thing has keyless entry and it works perfectly? Power door locks, a remote, it auto locks when it starts. Everything is set up on this car. Oops, I forgot to open the rear hatch. It has an electronic release, very cool. And it holds a full size spare, ready to go. You can throw your tools beside it and it has straps, cross straps to go over that tire. So you're ready to go in case you lose a tire out in the desert. I'm sure you can imagine what that looks like, although it's fully carpeted. So it keeps that spare quiet, very cool.